How to make a coil mug. First, make a slab bottom for your mug. Take your lump of clay and form it into a nice round ball by rolling it and hitting it between your hands. After you have a ball, you are going to place it on the surface and hit it three times with your palm before flipping it over. One, two, three, and flip. Flipping it every three times you hit the clay will keep it from sticking to the surface you are working on. You want your slab to end up being about as thick as one of your fingers. Check it before you stop or before you get too thin. After you form your slab, you can shape it or you can use tools to uh, trace a shape and cut it out so that you have a perfect circle or any other shape you need for the base of your mug. Second, roll coils. Take a new lump of clay and using one hand, squish it and form it into a long hot dog-like shape. After you have your hot dog, lay it on your surface and roll it out using one hand. Pay attention to how I am rolling with my whole palm. I am rolling all the way from the tips of my fingers to the bottom of my hand. Make sure you are moving back and forth along the coil to keep it nice and even. You want your coil to be also about as thick as your thumb. Third, build the mug. You will use your base and your coils to build the shape of your mug. Using the base, wrap the coil around the edge of the base, measuring it so that it matches up and breaking it or pinching it off so that you can attach the coil into a smooth circle around the bottom of the base. After you have smoothed that coil together, you will take the rest of your coil or a new coil and wrap a second layer on top of the coil. You will continue adding coils on top of each other until you have the height that you want your mug or bowl to be. By stacking the coils either a little bit inside or a little bit outside of the previous coil, you can make your mug get bigger or smaller as it gets taller. So here you can see I am making my coils a little bit smaller as they go up, which is going to make my cup begin to curve inwards and get skinnier as it goes up. You can also do the opposite, making it get wider. To make your cup solid and food safe, you will need to smooth all of the coils together. To do the outside, use one hand to support the wall from the inside and use your other hand to gently press the clay up and down, smoothing it together so it forms one solid wall of clay. You can see this process can be a little bit tricky as the clay pulls up and down and wants to split where the coils are. But as long as you keep moving the clay up and down with your fingers, you will eventually get a smooth outside wall to your mug. At the end of building your mug, you can also take a sponge around to smooth out any bumpy parts. So you don't need to worry about it being perfectly smooth right now, just connecting all the pieces. Smoothing the inside is just as important or more important than smoothing the outside for a mug. So carefully smooth all of the inside walls of your mug, including connecting the coils and the base to each other. It's important to do this step every couple of coils so that you are not trying to reach your hand all the way down to the base of a large mug at the end of building your project. When you are done smoothing the inside, you should not see any lines dividing pieces of clay. Fourth, decorate using the scratch and attach method. When you have decorations or pieces cut out, you cannot just stick one piece of clay to another. If you do this, your decorations are going to pop right off of your mug. Anytime you are attaching two pieces of clay, you have to scratch and attach. Using the needle tool, you will scratch lines into your clay. Make sure the lines cross over each other, going in at least two different directions, even three. 
you want to scratch both pieces of clay that are being attached to each other. Anytime two pieces of clay are touching, you are scratching both pieces of clay. Then you will dip one finger into water and wet the scratches. This will create something called slip and it means your clay will look very, very shiny. You also need to do this to both pieces of clay. Once both pieces of clay are scratched, you can press them together, tap them gently, and smooth them together. The wet, shiny clay will fuse together to turn it into one solid piece. Make sure all of your details, your handles, and anything you are doing to attach one piece of clay to another piece of clay, you are using the scratch and attach method, scratching both pieces of clay, adding water, and pressing and smoothing them together. If you do not use scratch and attach, the pieces of clay will fall apart either while you are building or when your clay project is fired in the kiln. As long as you use the scratch and attach method, your clay pieces will fuse together and be strong. To make a handle, you are going to start with a coil. When you are attaching a handle, you will start with the coil for your handle and measure it against the side of your mug. I like to use the side of the coil instead of the end because it looks more professional and it also attaches easier to the side of the mug. After you have your handle shaped, you will need to scratch on the side of the mug where the top and bottom of your handle will attach. Make sure you are using extra crisscrossing lines and being really thorough with your scratch and attach. It's important to scratch and attach all of your pieces, but if you want to be able to hold your mug by the handle, it's extra important that your mug is really securely attached. Make sure you are scratching both pieces of clay, the top and the bottom of where the handle goes. You can see here that by using the side of the coil to attach instead of the very small end of the coil, I have more area of the clay to scratch and turn into slip so that I can make sure my handle is really carefully attached. I like to start with the top connection of the handle, so I am only going to add water and make slip on the top of the handle and the top part of the mug. When I press the handle to the mug, I am also smoothing the clay into the mug. I really want to make sure I am pressing them together and also smoothing that clay together. The most common place for a mug to break is the handle. So the more careful you are with smoothing and attaching your handle to your mug, the better off your final product is going to be. After your handle is attached, you can still shape your mug handle a little bit. You can adjust how much you want it to curve, if you want it to be a little bit taller or shorter. I want my mug handle to sit up a little bit and you can see that because the clay is wet, it doesn't want to stay up. So I can actually use a paint cup in this case and prop it underneath while it dries. 